Hey guys, so this is uh, again a macro video and this is the new uh, TT Artisan uh, 100 F2 macro two times, two times macro uh, for the GFX camera. So if I say new, I don't think this is a new lens. I think this is exactly the same lens that they've had with different mounts. Um, they just made a GFX mount. I think this is the same lens that uh, they sell uh, with a tilt shift um, for other mounts. Uh, unfortunately, no tilt shift for GFX. And obviously, uh, yeah, this is uh, my biggest worry about this lens, To just to put it all out there, was uh, will it cover a two times macro, which is quite a bit. I mean, this is kind of a dream lens for the GFX. As you guys know, I've been looking at macro lenses for the GFX system for a long time. I've tried a lot of stuff. You know, I've tried the uh, Artisan extenders, blah, blah, blah. I've, I've tried a lot of stuff. Um, some good solutions, some not so good solutions. This, when I saw it, I had to jump on it. Um, you know, this is a 102.8 macro. Um, I bought it for, I think it was $350, uh, came directly from China, comes in the usual uh, TT Artisan box, um, it looks to be really well made, um, you know, solid, has that kind of that Leica-like uh, design font, um, thank God it has a nice uh, lens hood there it does not have a lens shade which i guess makes sense because working distance is pretty close uh, it has these little mounts there it's actually pretty cool because it comes with a little hot shoes that you can mount on different uh, sides of the lens which is cool uh, to mount flashes on it i mean it's a plastic thing so i don't know how long it holds and it only comes with one but um yeah it's a great it's a great looking lens, well made. The one thing that I noticed right away that kind of uh, was a little strange to me was this is a, you know, this is a 100 uh, millimeter lens, 2.8. So it should be a good portrait lens as well. Uh, the throw on this lens from uh, minimum distance uh, 0 0.25 to infinity, as you guys can see, is not very much throw it's very smooth uh which always kind of blows my mind um you know the these guys make these lenses and uh yeah i mean i don't really see the difference between this just holding it and uh a leica lens and this is 350 bucks i'm not saying that this is as good as leica i'm not saying that um but they make this stuff really well uh, it's incredible for that little money, but the throw is, uh, especially for a macro lens that is that that can do that much. Uh, I think the throw is too short. So that's that was my first impressions of the lens. Uh, it's pretty well balanced on the body. It's pretty. It's not a very big lens. If I compare this to the, um, this is the. Let's see what lens is this i got this thing which i'm not sure about this thing anyway this is the uh, what is that the td artisan 125 this is like the ultra yeah never mind this is the 90 millimeter uh 1.25 it's about the same size this is probably heavier a little thicker um, with an extension tube, this is definitely bigger. This is definitely the bigger lens. So um, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty comp compact, uh, nice looking lens. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, these lens shades, I got this because the lens shade that came with this lens wasn't that great. I'm not sold on these. It's kind of, I mean, it works, but I don't know. Anyway. Um, so yeah, just to 
get to the point right away because I know that uh, this is what uh, a lot of you guys want to know. Does it cover? No, it doesn't. Um, when you're at closest distance, two times mag magnification, uh, there is hard vi vignetting. Uh, it's not bad. And uh, again, this is two times. Uh, if you go further away, it goes away and it's fine. I think one to one, it covers. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit of a trade-off. Uh, two point magnification is very big. I'm gonna hook this up um, and show you the um, light screen tethered, um, show you what the, you know, what it does. The other thing that I'm um, that I'm kind of excited about this lens uh, is, and that from what I've heard of it, it's a flat field lens, which is huge because that is the biggest issue I had with the Fuji uh, macro, which is a great lens, great portrait lens in my opinion. Um, you know, but it's just not a flat field lens, which makes it really hard to work with uh, in macro. Plus, it also doesn't get anywhere near this magnification. I mean, I think it's a one to two, um, and this is a two to one. So, um, yeah. So, let's hook it up and see what it does. Okay, another thing, and I'm gonna just put this camera on here, um, just to give you an idea of the setup that I'm using here. Um, I'm gonna put this uh, camera on this tripod. Um, from what I can see, you know, with the bubbles and everything, it's level here. Um, this is what I'm gonna shoot. So I'm gonna slide this over. Let me just grab this and show you guys. Let me turn this over. Okay, so this is the setup here. Obviously, um, I zeroed the the tripod here and the bubbles are level. I don't know if the table is level. I don't know. So I'm going to just have to kind of wing it um, to see if this is actually parallel or not. Um, but uh, I think we should see in the preview pretty quickly if this is gonna work or not. So, yeah, let's see. Okay, so this is uh, the preview in Capture One. As you guys can see, this is, uh, okay, first of all, obviously, I, because the distance is really close, um, anything moves. I'm, this is on my desk here the desk is uh, you know if I just put my arm down on my desks this does this so ignore the wobble here um, this is pretty much as close as I can focus and this is at 2.8 as you guys can see the vignetting on the edges here where's my cursor so it's a hard vignette um, if I adjust the distance on this, this is, I have to loosen this. If I adjust the distance on this, I'll move this up and focus. You guys can see that this goes away. I'm going to go up. As you guys can see, this is a just a uh, printer test that I printed out. Um, and this would be about, actually, this is, I'm not sure what one to one is. There's still a little bit of vignetting here, and now it's gone. So this, no, not quite, but I think that can be fixable in post. So this is about maybe a little less than one to one. Um, 
but as you guys can see it's uh, this lens seems to be pretty flat field I'm gonna go out even more take this up even more no it's still vignettes on the white piece of paper let's see where it goes away completely it still doesn't it doesn't really go away so this would be I mean this is still very high mag magnification um, this is 2.8 uh, let's see if I close down here Uh, vignetting does not get worse. Let me get closer again. I mean, all in all, so far, this is really impressive for a lens that's 350 bucks. And honestly, no other lens really provides this kind of performance or even these options so this is about f11 f8 f11 and uh, getting a little bit of a, vign of a vignette there um, so let me move something else in here that I've have one of my favorite things as you guys probably know is things that I find and what is better than a deceased bug that I found I'm gonna Give this a little more light and I'm gonna go closer now obviously we're gonna see some vignetting here but this is really not a situation where I'm too worried about that because see how close I can go and this is about as close as I can go Wow okay so this I'm gonna have to open up here some more because it does get really dark and this is pretty crazy this is a complete two to one and uh, yeah this does look I, I think this looks really good this is definitely something um, let me focus in here. I mean, this is how close this is. So I have tried to shoot this lens handheld um, outside, two to one, and it is not possible. Um, yeah, the detail looks great on this. Wow. It's pretty crazy. Um, let me throw something else in here. So I tried to shoot this handheld outside. Let me go to zoom out. This would be a fit. So let's see. Um, so this is this hummingbird 
that you guys have seen before and that's how close let me go out here because this is two to one doesn't really make a lot of sense with this just to guys give you an idea what the magnification is of this lens this is pretty crazy Yeah, it is, it is pretty much impossible to shoot this lens handheld at this magnification. Um, I tried to do it. Um, I tried to... The, the only way to get some result is to go um, into a drive mode, shoot five, frame, 5 frames a second, and just kind of stand still, because regardless, even if the object is not moving, you're moving so much that uh, it's just gonna you're just even if you think you're not moving you're rocking back and forth it's just gonna it's just gonna uh, throw things in and out of focus or just shift the focus um, so this is about f11 or something yeah I think this this looks this looks really good Pretty crazy. So I'm just sliding this out with the slide here. I'm going to switch over to the uh, Pretty crazy. Okay. Okay. So this is, as you guys can see, this is the this is the setup here that I was using. Um, this is the uh, macro sled that I uh, used to get the camera to get the camera up and down. Um, this is the you know, this is how small the stuff is. Um, so let me flip this around. Okay, so just wanted to give you guys an idea um, of what the lens can do. It's 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 really amazing um, for the price. The quality seems to be really unbelievable. Um, I think it's better than the old uh, Mamiya lenses that I've tried. Um, it's, I think there is less, I haven't seen any chromatic aberration on it at all, um, which is, which makes it better than using the other uh, just tele lenses that I had with the extension tube, because the closer the magnification is, the more CA I got and the more funky stuff was was going on so that is extremely well controlled on this lens uh, it's super compact it's incredibly cheap um, works really well so there's one more aspect to this um, a friend of mine is going to uh, he's making a book and he's scanning his scanner broke he was we were talking about what am I gonna do and I told him to um, you know look in a couple of things that I've seen online about people scanning with uh, their Fuji GFX and um, so he was looking into it he's gonna get a stand he's gonna get a, a, a little light table I, I don't know who the who the company is that sells the the, the setup but um, I'm gonna look into it and I told him that uh, you know one of the things that I've seen online uh, about that process is uh, getting the right lens and I think that this lens um, might be just about the perfect lens for that. Um, you don't really need, uh, you know, he's scanning medium format, so which is you know six by seven. Um, so he doesn't need one to. He doesn't even need one to one. Um, it, yeah, there is a little bit of vignetting even at uh, larger magnification, but it seems to be really flat, 
which is important for a film, obviously. Resolution seems to be top notch, absolutely great. Um, and yeah, so, you know, he doesn't really need to go completely full frame. And even if he does, um, the uh, slight vignetting at that size uh, shouldn't be hard vignetting. It should be easily corrected. Um, so I'm going to look into that once he has that set up and I'm going to, uh, we're, we're going to try that with that lens as well. But, uh, so far for, from what I can see, um, and I shot a couple of things, uh, made a couple of prints, uh, that I hang in there. Um, and I'll, I'll show you guys that, um, it, uh, yeah, it looks really great. I mean, it's, I, I think right now, this is my favorite. Um, probably my favorite macro solution for the GFX and probably the cheapest um, and the easiest. Works really well. I don't even, I mean, I have this light on here obviously because it's a setup situation, but uh, realistically it just, you know, you just go back and forth uh, other than, you know, unlike a, a adapting a different lens with a close-up tube and then having constantly having to play with distance and focus uh, you don't really have to do that obviously with this kind of lens um, so yeah I think they did a great job okay so uh, I had to reshoot this uh, section of the video because the noise outside was just too much couldn't really remove it from the video anymore anyway so just wanted to show you guys uh, this is the first print that I've done with um, from from a file that I, that I shot this was just shot through the window it's a classic situation of uh what i like to do i'm gonna zoom in here a little bit show you guys a little better um so this is just through a window this is a classic uh thing of um you know abstract i'm really happy with the way that the lens uh, performs. I mean, the detail on this is great. The fall off is looks really good. Um, in these sections right here, I don't see any kind of uh, optical issues with it at all. There's no, uh, there's like, uh, these files are not fixed in any way. Um, you know, there's no CA removal, anything like that. Um, colors look great uh, the funny thing about this shot was that um, as I'm so this is at two uh, literally at, at largest uh, magnification it's really hard to shoot like that handheld uh, again this is you know through a, a piece of glass actually and um, as I was shooting this I'm you know looking at it through the finder and trying to get some focus and trying to stand still and uh, getting it all lined up um, an ant actually crawled right through here and at two times magnification that ant is very very big I mean it looked like a uh, you know like an and I didn't know it, it actually almost scared me it startled me so um, it was really interesting obviously shooting uh, I've, I've, I've tried to shoot handheld, um, just get a couple more files, get a couple of ideas outside. It's really, really difficult. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. This is definitely, especially at that magnification, uh, a tripod situation, and probably is will be used uh, as that anyway because focus is really difficult. Um, so yeah, just wanted to show you guys this. Um, Again, this is just the first, literally, I think this was one of the first frames that I shot. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. So, as always, uh, if you like this content, you know, if this, uh, please let me know, like it, uh, subscribe. I keep working on this right now. This seems to be like a great solution for uh, macro work. I'm always looking for new solutions, and um, yeah, so I'll keep working on it. If you know, send me your 
uh, your, your thoughts on it and um, let me know what you think of what you'd like to do and what you'd like to see and I'll try to get it done. All right. Thanks for watching.